This is Larry Benko, W0QE. And as I indicated in a previous video, I was going to do a follow-up video describing the relationship between the three new variables, ZSEN for Z-Center, ZSWR for the center of the SWR circles, and ZGen for a generator impedance, versus Z0, which used to do all of these functions and tied them together. They have now been separated if you wish to separate them, which allows for additional uh, flexibility in SimSmith. I've created a circuit here which matches 50 ohms to 5 ohms through a PIL network. Nothing special about this network other than the fact that I wanted to see some large movement of the path along the Smith chart. And there are no other variables along with the generators just to use Z0 generator producing 1 watt into a 50 ohm load and we match to 5 ohms. Everything's cool. As we talked about earlier in the previous video, often we'd want to put this, the center of the Smith chart here. And to do that, a new variable has been created called ZSEN. You have to put a semicolon there and ZSEN and with optional semicolon. The last line can either have, has, has an optional ending uh, semicolon or not. And if we do that, there was a 60 in there from before, but we can put it where, make it wherever we want to make it. Let's let's make it five. Uh, well, let's leave let's leave it at let's leave it at 50 for a moment here, and let's notice a couple things. This point is 50 plus J0. This point is five plus J0. This point is 13 plus J22. If I center the Smith chart at at five ohms. This point here is still 50 plus J0, this point is still 5 plus J0, and this point is still 13 plus J22. Nothing changes. SimSmith doesn't, doesn't do anything else. This is just a plotting difference. That's all it is. We still get the point 0.92 watts out. Everything's exactly the same. The voltages on all the components are the same. This is just a visual change. Now, by doing that, two things should be noticed. And I made a little table here. When there was no variable ZSEN and there was no variable ZSWR, the center of the Smith chart was Z0 and the one-to-one -one impedance for the SWR circles um, was Z0 also. Now we come along and we change the center of the Smith chart with ZSEN. We still have no SWR variable. There's no SWR variable. And the center of the Smith chart is now ZSEN, which is 5, and the center of the SWR circles is also Z-Sen. The SWR circles appeared not to move, but in reality they did move. If they didn't move, they would have been over here around 50. So they, they, they stayed relatively the same as far as the Smith chart, uh, the look of the Smith chart. And this is exactly what you want. It's, this is perfect for the INVZ feature, as we talked about before. However, there is another variable called ZSWR, and let's look at how that inner interacts with the ZSEN variable. And it now is set to two and a half ohms. Okay, well, that's where it was last time. It, when, when I bring SimSmith up and I start using it, this variable gets set even though we're not being used. It's not being used. And it's not until next time I restart the program does it come back up to zero. But it was set at two and a half last time. We can see the center now for the SWR circles is at two and a half ohms. We can move this center point independent of everything else. If we, if we actually put 50 ohms in the ZSWR, this is exactly the same plot we had when we started with the blue trace just barely touch, just barely being outside the six to one SWR circle and with the six to one SWR circle being between these two, these two traces. And this is, this is what you might expect to happen when you change the center, but Smith, uh, Sim Smith is nice enough to move the center down for us. Clearly with this case right here, and both of these are complex numbers, we can move the SWR circle without regard to any of, the, of what's going on in the circuit. We can make it be something that makes absolutely no sense at all. We could, we could set it to be um, 2 plus J5, say. And if we set the SWR circle center to be anything other than a real value, we run the risk that the SWR circles will be um, 
outside of the Smith chart, part of that, or at least part of the SWR, SSWR circles will be outside of the Smith chart. And that's perfectly fine, and the math works just fine for that, but it may be disconcerting. Most people, like I said, indicated before, but if you want this to be two, you just set it to be two. And most generators, um, or most loads, are, try to be resistive, basically. Most generators try to be resistive also. For reasons uh, that if they're highly reactive, you end up with extra voltage and extra current on them that doesn't do any good. And um, it just can, you know, just causes larger components to be needed and stuff like that. So we can, we can move this at will. That's the only point I'm trying to make. So when we have both the variables, the center is still the center. The SWR circle is now defined by this variable. And we haven't talked about this case. And this case is where there is no Z center anymore. And let's look at what that does. I can just comment this out. And when I do that, what happens is since the center is not defined and the SWR circle does not set the center of the Smith chart, we revert back to Z naught for the center of the Smith chart, which it is. But our SWR circles now are over here. You could, if you want, if you really didn't want to move the center of the Smith chart and you wanted to see SWR, SWR circles over here, you could have set this to be five ohms, and there would be the two, to, the 1.2 to one and the six to one SWR circle about the load impedance. And you can see how they're, they don't center, they aren't centered on each other. These points in here are spread out. These are compressed more, but you know, anyways, this is how Sim Smith works right now, and this this works very very well. Now there's another variable called Zgen. And if we include Zgen in here, let me just put Z center back in back in the pro, into the equation like we had it before. And we'll leave that at five too. Um, we'll create a new va variable called Zgen. And in my opinion, Zgen is kind of redundant right now. There's so much flexibility in here. It does one thing though. Um, and I'll show that in just a second. We can create a, a Z-Gen. It's 80 right now. I can move this move this number all over the place. Nothing changes. It has no effect on this on this schematic. Um, it has no, no effect on the generator, no effect on the load, no effect on the SWR circles. It just appears to have no effect. Where it does have effect is that there's a new generator type called Thev for Thevenin. And... I don't really want any of that. It gets populated with these things, but if I just put Thev in here alone, it it picks up the Zgen value. The documentation indicates that the Thev, the Thevenin voltage source is new. It may not um, last the, te the test of time. It's hard to know. Um, We'll see, we'll see what happens. It's certainly usable. It can, it can simulate all the other generator types just fine. Uh, if we leave this at 80 ohms and we get rid of all this circuitry for a moment and set this to 80 ohms, we will see that we have one watt. And as we change the, again, all the variables are set here. As we change the Zgen value, we see the power drop here. And we see that we have to go up this to match the same. And I got some of these set on geometric and some of them set on linear. Let's set them all on linear. Here we have a 100, 100 ohm source, one watt generator. It produces one watt into 100 ohms. It should produce into 50 ohms 0.88888 watts which is the mismatch loss from on a two to one SWR. So it works just fine. It's a 100 ohm generator. The center of the Smith chart can be put anywhere. The SWR uh, center can be put anywhere. Everything can be just put anywhere you want. At this point in time, Z naught has no purpose, almost. I can move Z naught all over the place, nothing changes. The only thing that I believe right now that, that Z naught is effect, affects is if I was to come along and put a piece of transmission line in here that becomes the the Z naught impedance. Um, there may be a few other things that are that are affected too, but that's the only place it's, it's used for that I that I that, that occurs to me at the moment. Clearly, if I set this to be 80 ohms and I bring another piece of transmission line in, it should come in with an 80 ohm impedance, and it does. You can obviously set these things to your you know manually, 
that's just a convenience. Uh, it's just a convenience thing that Sim Smith does, assuming if you're running with a 50 ohm generator, you'd want 50 ohm transmission line. So this is my take on what these new variables do. There may be a little bit more to it than I've in, than I've mentioned right now. If I figure out a little bit more, I will mention it at a later time. But as far as the type of videos I do, the Z Sen variable is by far the most valuable one. And it's the thing that makes um, a really a big, big deal to SimSmith because of the INVZ feature, which is really nice for calculating um, the matching range of networks. Thank you very much.